Hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. That you could all join us. Nice. Nice to see you there. We're just going to get started in about a minute. Hey, Todd, hope you had a good Easter. Hi, Shari, Lucia, glad you could uh, tune in again. Hope things are going well in South Carolina. Feel free to introduce yourself. Glad to have you on tonight. Uh, in the chat tonight, if you have any uh, questions, uh, Bridget is uh, moderating our chat box. Uh, if you have any suggestions of uh, future webinars that you'd like to uh, us to do, that would be great. I uh, have a lot of information tonight, and every kind of subset of uh, our lecture tonight could really have its, its own uh, additional webinar. So anything that you'd like to have more information on, uh, just bring it there to our attention, and uh, maybe we could do another webinar on those topics. Okay, so it's a little after seven o'clock and, and let's get started. Uh, I want to welcome you to our webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Mark Stagg. I'm the, uh, one of the co-owners of Whole Health Wellness Center here in Avon, Connecticut. And our topic tonight is going to be whole body, healthy aging, or how to age gracefully. We all age, but how can we do it, uh, do it better? Uh, I want to share with you some information that I've learned over the years. I've been in practice for uh, 20 years. I've treated thousands of patients, had many interactions uh, with folks who've had uh, good experience with longevity of life. And uh, along the way, I've uh, been able to just pick up a lot of proven research in the area uh, of aging. Along with us tonight uh, is, uh, again, Bridget, our medical office assistant, going to be running the chat uh, area. And our uh, guest tonight is John Montague. He's one of the nutritional consultants so we utilize for our office. John, maybe just have you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dr. John Montague. Um, I've been involved in the uh, functional medicine field since uh, the early 80s, so about 40 years. Currently, I'm a functional medicine consultant with Designs for Health, and, um, and I'm here just to go over some of the nutritional supplements and uh, just update that on, on that. Again, John, thanks uh, for taking the time and joining us tonight. We're going to cover about five different topics tonight uh, for better aging. We're going to cover nutrition. We're going to get into exercise, stress management techniques, how to uh, lower or keep low inflammation within our body, and we're going to review body structure. At the uh, end of our webinar tonight, uh, you can always have the opportunity to schedule a uh, question, uh, additional question and answer phone call uh, with one of our office assistants. Um, and for being a uh, guest to our web webinar tonight, uh, later we're going to talk about a device that we have uh, in our body, uh, in our office, uh, to help reduce uh, inflammation, decrease pain, uh, allow for better collagen production in our body, and that's called our Theralite 360. So uh, if you do schedule a call with uh, Bridget for any Q&A, uh, you can give her a call and she'll set you up with one of our complimentary uh, Theralite 360 uh, visits. So uh, first of all, we're going to discuss uh, nutrition and uh, nutrition for healthy aging. First of all, we want to make sure that we eat a variety of foods. You need to eat at least 40 different nutrients or more for good health, and no single food is going to supply all of those. Uh, your daily foods should be a nice selection of whole grains, um, fruits, vegetables, 
dairy products, meat, poultry, and other proteins. One helpful hint that I've uh, picked up along the way uh, is that when you look at your plates in the morning or lunch or dinner, you want to make sure that you have a lot of colors uh, on your plate. The more colors that are on your plate, you know, you're getting more nutrients. Uh, if you, again, if, you're, uh, if your meal is looking kind of bland, browns and whites, uh, maybe we should think about adding a little bit more uh, color to that plate. Uh, eat moderate portions. Um, unfortunately, we, we have to realize that as we age, we just do not need as many calories. So our plate uh, size, amount of food on our plate can just be less than what it used to be. So calorie control is important. Also, just to keep in mind what exactly a portion is. Uh, first of all, um, if we're having a sorb serving of meat or fish, and maybe we're just recommending three ounces of food, well, three ounces of meat is really just the size of a deck of cards. So uh, we want to make sure our portion size is uh, appropriate. And if we're talking about a, a medium piece of fruit, uh, uh, that would be a one serving size uh, of fruit. And so a medium piece of fruit would be about the size of an apple. So just kind of keeping those uh, portions in mind. Uh, eating regular meals uh, is quite important. Skipping meals can lead to out of control hunger, often result resulting in overeating. When you're very hungry, it's uh, tempting to forget about good nutrition. Another good tip is that uh, folks say uh, when in the, the grocery store, you shouldn't be hungry. Um, that is actually a pretty good piece of advice. It can definitely lead to poor decision making, picking the wrong types of food when we're hungry. Snacking between meals can really be helpful to curb hunger, hunger uh, but don't eat so much that actually can, the snack actually becomes its own meal. So a uh, smaller snack can be quite helpful. You want to know your diet pitfalls. Uh, to improve your eating habits, you first have to know really what's wrong with them. You really want to be mindful of things like certain cravings, uh, do we have uh, an addiction to certain foods like carbs or sugars? Uh, within our office, we use uh, meditation, acupuncture, or even refer folks out for hypnosis to get over certain sugar or sugar or food addictions. The use of a diet diary can be quite helpful uh, to write down everything you eat. Uh, um, doing this over about a seven day period can be quite helpful. And then looking back at that diary can really allow us to more closely examine the trends um, in our diets and uh, uh, allow us to analyze it so that we can make the proper, uh, address the proper changes that need to be made. But overall, I think balance in, and moderation in our food choices is, is really important. Uh, not every food has to be perfect. When eating a food high in fat, salt, sugar, select foods that are low, select other foods that are low in those ingredients. If you miss out on any food group in the day, well, just pick it up on the next day. Uh, your food choices over several days should really fit into a healthy pattern. And we don't want to get too upset if we do make the wrong decision. The next day, we, we can try to balance it out. other helpful tools uh, that we utilize in our office a lot. I found a lot of my patients uh, find quite helpful. Uh, one is becoming familiar with uh, the term uh, glycemic index. I would really advise maybe later tonight to Google glycemic index so you can actually see a food chart of what foods are on the glycemic index. Glycemic index itself is a system of assigning numbers to carbohydrate containing foods according to how much each food gets easily converted over to sugar and raises blood sugar in your body. Glycemic index uh, can be, uh, foods can be rated either low, medium, or high on a glycemic index. So a low glycemic uh, index are foods that are lower than 55 uh, on a glycemic index. A medium glycemic index food is 56 to 69 and a high glycemic index food is considered above 70. Um, what we can do is uh, when we're looking at these foods, if we're trying to pick out a grain or starch to eat, we can help us make the right decisions. For instance, if we're going to choose to have the Mexican food, um, 
wild rice, for instance, uh, has a glycemic index of 57, whereas the taco shells that we may also want to choose has a glycemic index of uh, 97, significantly higher. So maybe the rice is a better choice than the taco shells. Vegetables have different glycemic indexes, uh, such as spinach only has a glycemic index of 15, whereas cooked carrots uh, have a glycemic index double that of 39. Certain fruits are much lower on the glycemic index than others. Um, for instance, an apple only has a glycemic index of, of 38, uh, whereas watermelon uh, glycemic index of 72 really much uh, heavily has a much heavier effect on our blood glucose. If we're going to choose a snack, a protein, peanuts only have a glycemic index of around 20, whereas the chickpeas uh, have glycemic index uh, into the 40s. So uh, again, Google, glyc Google glycemic index, uh, find a good list, and it can be quite helpful to you. Uh, sarcopenia. Uh, something to consider uh, as we age. Uh, sarcopenia is the uh, age-related loss uh, of muscle tissue. Risk factors for sarcopenia can include uh, age, gender, level of activity. Unfortunately, uh, over time, muscle mass uh, can decrease in our bodies. Uh, um, that can impair uh, our performance, our function, uh, and can lead to falls and, unfortunately, a loss of our autonomy. One thing we're going to have uh, John uh, speak about tonight is one of the products that we use in our office to combat uh, sarcopenia, and that's our clean protein product. So, John, maybe you could just give us a little information on that. But sarcopenia is such a serious uh, condition as we age. I mean, that's one of the things that if, if we can prevent it, we can really slow down aging. So. It's important to get a really good quality protein, and that helps to slow down any muscle loss, and it helps to, you know, combined with weightlifting, builds it up. Um, you know, clean protein is a vegan protein. Um, it's really, it comes from a yellow pea. It's a yellow pea protein. And part of the reason for clean protein is why it is a clean protein is because it's, it's a pea protein as opposed to a soy protein. Uh, soy protein and other types of uh, Vegetable proteins uh, contain different types of anti-nutritional factors such as lectins and oxinates and that. And this is why, you know, having a clean protein such as a pea protein is very important. It gives you a good quality protein. And also it has a really good amino acid profile, which uh, the other thing is there's no, you know, for a lot of people, they're allergic to milk and different things like that. And so... With a vegetarian protein, you don't have to worry about a whey protein or something like that, uh, triggering any allergies or different things like that. Um, so this is, is an excellent protein for anyone to use. So We've used this product for years. Um, I, I can't even count the number of patients, like on one hand, that have had any stomach upsets or any discomfort for this product. So it really uh, works nicely as a, as a daily uh, meal supplement. Uh, next thing I'm going to have uh, John discuss is a uh, biomulti. Uh, a multivitamin, even if we do eat properly, uh, a good multivitamin can be quite important. Researchers have found that uh, over the years, over the decades, the actual nutrients in our soils are not as powerful as they used to. So even if you are eating a great variety of fruits, vegetables, grains, you still might not be getting all the nutrients uh, that you need. So we'll just have John speak about our, our bio multi multivitamin a little bit. I think the base for any anti-aging program is you need a good foundation. And a multi makes that a solid foundation for anybody to build on. And bio multi is unique in, in, in the terms of multi because this is the first uh, multi that was based on its development, looking at evolutionary biology. If you look at a lot of other multis in the field um, that are available, they just kind of have no necessarily any logic into why they are using so much of different B vitamins and E or that. But, what Biomulti did is it took a look back at what the diet was, you know, before when people were eating really healthy and the type of nutrients that they were getting. And then we pulled that into a, one multi. The other thing that it does is it has some unique things in it. It has um, 
bioavailable uh, B vitamins. Those are methylated Bs, which, which means that, you know, for, for me, when I take, used to take multis, they'd always bother my stomach. And that's because most B vitamins, are, you know, aren't methylated. They don't absorb well and they don't go right to work. Your liver has to process them and make them, make them available for the body. With the, uh, with these, the bees that are in here, you don't have that problem. They go to work right away for you. Um, this also, the minerals that are in here are unique. It's their mineral chelates. A lot of times when you see different things in minerals, you see like a, a um, magnesium oxide. The problem with a lot of these simple things like magnesium oxide is they don't absorb very well. What, when you have a mineral chelate, you're, you're attaching it to a um, amino acid, which helps to pull it into the body, makes it much more available to the body. So you're getting those minerals to where they need. And what makes this, again, probably one of the most unique things is there's a variety of phytonutrients in here. So it's kind of like you're, you're giving the body a variety of different types of things they get in fruit and vegetables, such as lutein, lycopene, resveratrol, wild blueberry is in there, broccoli seed and sprout is in there, citrus bioflavonoids, and also muscadine grape extract is in there. So it's really a complete multi, uh, you know, the people I know that take this definitely feel great when they're using it. So thanks, Mark. Yeah, no doubt, John, thanks. Uh, for many of my patients, after we get them uh, out of pain and stronger, we'll try to get this, uh, advise a, a foundational product such as this to keep them well. Um, I commonly have to see patients again down the road because of flare-ups. And I, I can tell the patients have stopped taking their, their bio multi just because the integrity of the, the tissues and whatnot have decreased or inflammation has uh, come back. So I can really tell the difference uh, with my patients, uh, unfortunately, if, if they stop using it uh, after a period of time. So uh, next thing we're going to delve into uh, exercise, and we're not going to go into specific exercises because there's so many different things that I could uh, advise upon. But we're really going to go over techniques or tips for effective exercise, uh, how to avoid failure. Um, unfortunately, again, today I had a patient come in uh, that told me every time I tried to do an exercise, I just hurt myself. And uh, so really becoming uh, aware of your body, your body structure, and the, and the pitfalls uh, of exercise that could make it go sideways on you. So first of all, just a real important um, uh, area of, of just posture and how that can break down. First of all, we'll just use this uh, analogy of uh, a bowling, doll, bowling ball. Everybody's head weighs uh, about 10, 12 pounds, about the uh, weight of a bowling ball. Uh, unfortunately, over time, um, our muscles can weaken, our posture can decrease, and we um, have what is called anterior weight bearing. And that's forward head placement uh, of the head uh, in front of the shoulders. With that can come tension on the neck. Uh, shoulders can become rounded, so it can press in onto the rib cage, uh, it can affect our breathing. Actually, there's been a lot of geriatric research that um, an increased anterior weight bearing with a kyphosis can also actually increase uh, the levels of uh, mortality. So how can you look at your own posture? Um, one way you can look into a mirror to look at your posture to see how you're doing, or you can have a partner help you out with looking at your posture. First of all, if you're looking at a mirror, you want to see um, or look at an imaginary line, as in, is there a even line that comes down between your eyes, chin, breastbone, pubic area, all the way down to your ankles? Does that line go straight up and down? Then looking at things from more of a horizontal perspective, are my shoulders straight across? Uh, are my hips straight across? Are my knees equal in height with one another? Uh, looking at your head, is your head tilted to one side or the other? Uh, all these different areas can kind of give us keys to what particular muscle groups may, we may uh, need to look at. For all of my new patients, I, I do evaluate that anterior weight bearing. And you can have someone do this to you. Um, how you actually determine if somebody has anterior weight bearing is you have someone look at you from the side and you find your, the middle of your ear or your ear hole. And then you can wanna see is does the middle of the ear go through the middle of the shoulder? 
and how far that ear hole goes forward on the shoulder determines how much anterior weight weight bearing you have. Not uncommon to have a, a half inch of anterior weight bearing, but unfortunately for, for many of our patients could be two, three inches forward on their body. Uh, and unfortunately with a uh, lifestyle of um, more cell phones, uh, laptops, uh, iPads, uh, a lot more young folks are uh, prone to these problems. So let's get into uh, some areas of uh, concern of uh, what you want to focus on if you're getting into an exercise a plan. First of all, you want to consult a professional if uh, exercise is new to you. Uh, for me, I'm a chiropractor, a certified acupuncturist, but I'm also a certified a chiropractic sports physician, which means I spent a, an additional year of training uh, to determine what sort of exercises should be good for, for patients. I can take care of athletes. So uh, when choosing a chiropractor, it's not a bad idea to see if they have the designation CCSP. Also, if you're joining a gym, most gyms give you at least a couple of visits complimentary uh, with a trainer. Uh, a trainer can show you how to use machines properly, uh, can make sure you have the proper form on those machines. Also, when choosing a trainer, you want to make sure that the, your trainer has a particular experience in your age group. Some trainers really only have experience or like dealing with um, high-level, uh, college-level uh, athletes. So you, you really want to delve in or ask other folks what trainer that they've used and make sure you find the right person for you. If you want to go on your own, make sure that uh, you're reading the proper books, um, good research, resources to choose to pick out the best information. Also, um, senior centers have great exercise programs that you can be guided through um, from more yoga, Pilates type classes, right down to if you're limited in certain ways, uh, cheer, cheer exercises, cheer yoga can, can be great. Stretching and warming up before exercises uh, can be very important. Just in general, there's a couple of concepts before we get into that on how often you should be exercising. Um, you want to really focus on exercising five to six days a week for about 20 to 40 minutes at a time. Now, recently, uh, a lot of folks are really doing too much cardio compared to weightlifting. They really should be at an equal ratio of weight or weight bearing exercises to cardio. And if you had to choose, Probably research shows that a little, little bit more weight-bearing exercises to cardio uh, can be more effective. Just back here to our stretching and warming up. Uh, you want to stretch. Um, the stretching before a uh, workout program should be light because your muscles are cold. So you kind of want to build up the intensity. You never want to do bouncing or jerky types of stretching. That's called ballistic stretching, and that can uh, increase the likelihood of a muscle injury. And you need to do about a 10 minute warm up at least before you get going with your exercise program. Proper uh, form is um, significantly important. Um, just had a, a patient today that injured his middle back uh, using a rowing machine. And he decided that he would uh, like to get an extra burn on his particular uh, exercise uh, for the day. And unfortunately, pulled a muscle in his back and injured uh, a disc. So uh, really, as it says here, it's, it's really with exercise, it's all about quality and not quantity, and that's where you get the results. So doing it properly with the proper form. Use of proper equipment. Um, just want to talk about a couple of areas here. Uh, we definitely don't want to skimp on the equipment that, you, that we use. Um, just to, to use uh, an example of uh, using dumbbells for bicep curls. Uh, many patients may find out that they're, they're kind of capable of using a, a five pound weight. Um, a good kind of judge of how much you sh weight you should use would be, can I do this uh, two sets of 10, uh, three sets, three, three sets of 12, and maybe that's a good weight for you. Once you've like achieved that three sets of 12 and it's easy to do, then maybe you can jump up to a higher weight. 
but really when we are doing exercise programs, we really shouldn't go beyond 10 to 50% of an increase in weight. Um, uh, going beyond that can be dangerous. So instance, for instance, you were using a five pound dumbbell to do bicep curls, jumping up to 10 pounds will be double and you could be prone to injury. So if you don't want to skimp, you want to have those seven pound weights or eight pound weights so you can slowly increase um, your uh, the level of weight training in a safe way. Also, orthotics or proper footwear can be quite important. You, you definitely don't want flimsy shoes that are um, easily, we say, wrung out. So you want to take the shoe, give it a twist. If you can easily wring out your shoe, your, your soles of your shoes may be too soft. You want to look at your feet. Do I have uh, high arches, no arches? How much of an arch support do I need? Uh, a lot of shoes these days have very poor arch supports. So uh, you can speak with your chiropractor about uh, the proper um, orthotics that you may have in your shoes. Or good resources are uh, New Balance can do uh, a very good screening and uh, get a good orthotic for maybe $50, $60. Also, some patients have a pelvic unleveling uh, that may, may have uh, certain exercises may be difficult for them. Some of our patients with pelvic unleveling or one leg that's actually shorter than the other may need alterations to their foot, uh, to their, their shoes, or a heel lift or a, a bump up on one side compared to the other. Good idea. The idea really to check with your doctor uh, on exercise programs, especially if you've gone from a very sedentary lifestyle to choosing to do a more dynamic exercise. Seeing a lot of patients these days have been very sedentary. Maybe they did tennis in the past. They said, well, I'm going to go give pickleball a trial. Uh, pickleball a try. Uh, pickleball is a very dynamic exercise. Use a lot of cardio, um, a lot of uh, different muscle groups. And you really want to check with your doctor to see, you know, is my un any underlying health conditions, uh, is it a good idea that I jump right into a, a dynamic exercise such as that? Or if you have pain, pain in your knees and your hips, also a good idea to check with your doctor, your chiropractor, see if I really need some treatment or rehabilitation exercises to strengthen up a particular joint area before I go and, and get into one of those dynamic exercises. Oh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, stability and what nutrients uh, that we can use. Uh, over the years, I've uh, used a lot of different uh, products to help patients with their joint uh, stability, um, uh, such as I use glucosamine, chondroitin for a number of years, but I really only found that maybe 20% of patients found good results from it. Uh, but over the last few years, I've been using collagen, and my patients have had great success with stabilizing bones, joints, skin. Uh, let's kind of, John, speak about our, our triple collagen product a little bit. I mean, I, so once I discovered the, uh, the triple collagen, it, it made a huge difference for me. I mean, this is a great product. Um, the thing to realize about collagen, it's, it's a structural protein and it's, it's everywhere throughout the body. You'll find it in the, you'll find it in your joints. You'll find it in your bone. You'll find it in your skin. You'll find it in your muscle. It just basically gives the structure and holds everything up. Um, so 25 to 35 percent of whole body protein content is is collagen. Um, back in the day, people were eating skin and organs and uh, bones, so they had a, a diet much higher in collagen. But you don't see much of that anymore. So it's important to get collagen in your diet. Um, we start to lose collagen about 1% per year after 20. And uh, for women, it's even worse because women have about half the collagen of men. So they're, they're already, the, the, that collagen when it starts decreasing is more noticeable as time goes on. Um, when you lose collagen, you'll start to notice that you'll have wrinkles, um, hair gets brittle, nails get brittle, you know, joints get painful, um, you know, the heart disease, all of that. So to me, it makes a huge difference to take collagen. And there's there's different types of collagen that it, triple collagen is different than the collagen you'll go pick up at the at the drugstore or the health food store. There's really I, I break it down into three different types of collagen. You have basically you have 
the regular collagens, these are type one and type two, and there's actually 55 different types about of collagen. And those are the very large molecules. You'll also see in the story, you'll see something that's called peptides. And what peptides are, is those collagens broken down into smaller molecules. So rather than big like this, they're down much smaller. Triple collagen is a peptide, but it's different. It's a research peptide. So rather than being this size, it's about this size. And the reason that's important is because it allows you to absorb easier. A big molecule doesn't absorb in the, in the intestines, doesn't get into your body. So it's very important to get it into your body. Research peptides are different than peptides because really collagen, what collagen does when you take it is it stimulates your own body to produce collagen. So it's a stimulatory molecule. So even though you take a, a peptide, it doesn't mean it's going to do anything. And triple collagen, the reason it's triple is we have three research peptides in there. One of them has been researched to enhance bone density. One's been shown to help heal joints and build up joints. And the third one's been researched to help reduce wrinkles. Um, just a quick story about this. My wife took collagen for two years after, after she started on this. In three weeks, she started to notice a difference in her skin. Um, I started taking this and immediately started to notice a difference in joint pain in that. So I, I really highly recommend that to everyone I talk to. Um, I always recommend collagen as being a base for a healthy nutritional anti-aging diet. Thanks, John. And I think that's kind of a magic number. I've, I've, most of my patients who get good results with it notice it probably within three weeks. Um, so I think it acts pretty fast compared to some other products. Okay, so uh, stress management strategies. Uh, we could do a whole webinar on this uh, particular topic. I, I think mindfulness is uh, really important. Um, just to, in general, Bridge, if you want to write this down, uh, the Calm app, D-A-L-M, uh, definitely worth the, the pr price. Uh, so for mindfulness, for meditation, that particular app has been really helpful for a lot of my patients to uh, regain their sleep cycles, uh, can really help with food cravings, addictions, uh, and really just help with the, the, the daily uh, stress and pressures in our body. Um, and, and really helping those three areas can really help us uh, age more better. Um, acupuncture. Um, it's, I am a certified acupuncture. Certain acupuncture points uh, are great for stress. The National Institutes of Health, their number one recommendation for acupuncture is for the reduction of stress. And then therefore further on beyond that is, is the reduction of pain. Certain points that are just fantastic to reduce stress. Uh, point on the foot here is uh, liver three, which is great for uh, reducing more like angry outbursts, stress, crying, uh, point between the eyebrows, yin tongue is fantastic for more um, OCD type behaviors or ruminating thoughts, dwelling on things that don't really matter or maybe unimportant. Uh, we should just leave those in the past. Uh, on the wrist, there's a great point called pericardium six, which is great to deal with uh, panic attacks or stress on the body, pressure on the chest, um, things such as that. Um, let's get into uh, breathing techniques. Breathing techniques can be a great way to reduce stress. And uh, when stressors come upon us, we can use those breathing techniques and nobody could really know that we're, we're using it uh, to, to reduce stress. So the, the technique uh, that we'll talk about is the three, seven, two, two technique. So um, really breathing or breathing properly just has a, a pr profound effect on our body. It can affect our cardiac function, our immune system, mood, stress levels, uh, those stress hormones, digestion, strength, circulation. Um, the most effective form of breathing is diaphragmatic breathing or breathing from the belly. Children um, do this naturally. Infants, children breathe from the belly, but as we get older, um, we kind of get away from that. So uh, let's just practice belly breathing for a couple of moments just to give you an idea of uh, how to breathe to reduce stress. 
Um, first of all, I think probably everybody is in a seated position. So again, we're just going to go over that. Uh, ideally, is that you do it in front of a mirror, but in a seated position would be good. You want to have your back straight, uh, hands on your belly can be good. So how we're going to do it, I'll just describe it uh, fast, uh, and then we'll go back over it. What we're going to do is we're going to take three breaths in through our nose, and then eventually we're going to breathe out through our mouth. Uh, as we're breathing out, we want to feel stress exit out through our body as we do each uh, exhalation. Uh, as you inhale, you really want to feel your belly and feel your lungs and belly popping out. Um, and when you exhale completely, you want to feel that your belly is moving back in towards your body. So uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to take kind of three breaths in through our nose. Uh, and then when we breathe out, we're going to breathe out generally for about twice as long uh, as our breaths in. So we're really going to push that air out of our belly, kind of feeling that stress kind of come out of our body at the same time. So again, we can have everybody practice. Uh, they're going to sit up straight, hands on your belly, and we're going to count to about three to take a breath in. So we're going to go up one, two, three, on the breath in, and then we're going to slowly blow out. And we can go from maybe the count of up to six, say three, four, five, six, feeling that breath blow out of our body. So if we are in a stressful period, what we're really going to do is that we're going to do that three breaths in, blowing out slow, and we're going to do that over about seven times. Then we're going to take a, a two-minute break, and then we're going to try to do that a couple more times. So again, that's the three, seven, two, two rule. Uh, you can Google this um, if uh, you kind of didn't pick up what I was saying. So again, belly breathing, three, seven, two, two rule. Uh, exposure to nature, another great way um, to access a stretch management activity. Being in nature, or even just viewing scenes of nature, uh, can reduce anger, fear, stress, uh, and increase pleasant feelings. Exposure to nature not only makes you feel better emotionally, but it contributes to your overall well-being. It can reduce your blood pressure, reduce heart rate, reduce muscle tension, and reduce the production of stress hormones. Scientists have found that being in nature actually reduces mortality. Research that's done in hospitals, offices, and schools uh, have found that even just having a simple plant in the room can significantly impact stress and anxiety. Unfortunately, uh, nature can have certain negative uh, effects. Uh, certain things that are in soils or air can actually increase um, toxins in our body, and we can label that free radicals uh, in our body. So uh, we want to take certain antioxidants to decrease free radicals uh, that are in our body. My wife wrote several books on the topic um, of uh, genetics and epigenetics, and epigenetics is the study of how your environment uh, affects your genes. A uh, follow-up book to Unzip Your Genes was The Bitter Prescription. That's really how to utilize bitters for the reduction of uh, free radicals or to increase antioxidants in your body. So just going to have uh, John talk to us a little bit about uh, bitter greens and antioxidants and their usefulness. Yeah, the, the Bitter Greens is a, a great product. Um, I, I highly recommend the books too. They're they're worth reading. Um, the one thing about Bitter Greens is you see, you, you start to see epigenetic activation when you're taking a greens formula like this. And in, in anti-aging, that's what, what turns on your genes to help you age slower. It's, it makes you younger. So these sorts of things are, you know, not easy to get in our diet every day. Um, and by having a, an additional formula that's made up of uh, fruits and vegetables, you're able to get it in one easy serving. Um, the Bitter Greens happens to have over 90% organic ingredients. Um, compared to other ones, they usually have 40 to 60% filler in them. Um, and only this one has 90% active ingredients um, with less than 10% filler. 
the um, there's no grains in there. Um, it's low because of that. That keeps it low allergenic. Um, the other thing is in a lot of greens formulas, it's very it's very inexpensive to use alfalfa for the greens. Alfalfa. I grew up in North Dakota, grew a lot of alfalfa for for grazing for cows, but it's you know, for humans, it's it's got its it's been known to actually aggravate uh, autoimmune conditions. This doesn't have any alfalfa. It's a nice, clear, clean product. It has uh, organic chlorella in it. Um, it has grape seed and skin, kale, uh, broccoli, cauliflower sprouts. All have high levels of group of sulfonophanes, which will help to turn on again, activate those genes and turn them on. So. It's a really nice formula for people to use. Okay, thanks, John. Well, let's, let's get into uh, inflammation. Um, is inflammation helpful uh, or harmful? Well, it can be helpful in the short term. Uh, it's, uh, we can have inflammation that is used in a response to an injury, infection, or exercise. Inflammation goes to the site of the injury, allows for the healing compounds of our body to get to that area. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes inflammation gets into our body and it's not reabsorbed, so it can become harmful. So chronic uncontrolled inflammation in response to injuries or autoimmune disease, allergies, inflammatory uh, diet or obesity can be an issue. Other conditions that can be associated with chronic inflammation are asthma, arthritis, heart disease, depression and mood disorders fibromyalgia, Alzheimer's, and uh, obviously uh, IBS-type uh, conditions. Uh, ways that um, we can reduce inflammation uh, within our body, first of all, reducing visceral fat, and that is fat that could be located around our heart, lungs, organs, such as that. We have a uh, great high-tech device in our body called the InBody 570 that can help us um, measure uh, the levels of visceral fat in someone's body. We put them on a particular diet. We can do our InBody 570 analysis again to determine how their, their visceral fat levels are doing. Uh, advising our patients on uh, sleep strategies. In our office, we do a lot of genetic testing to determine what particular type of anti-inflammatory diets um, may be necessary. Again, back to the basics, exercise, use of stress, other factors could be uh, improving oral health and obviously not smoking. One device that uh, we have in our office um, is a Theralight 360. A few years ago, we decided we had to do something uh, in our office to really help folks with uh, inflammation, pain, food disorders, and how can we increase collagen in the body. Uh, and the research all show that red light or near-infrared light therapy can really help with that. Um, so uh, Theralite um, types of treatments, uh, the device that you're laying in, kind of looks like a, a tanning booth, but there, there's no UV light in it. It's a kind of a moderately warm, comfortable 15 minute session. So how does red light therapy or near infrared light therapy work? Well, first of all, uh, light is applied to the body to, from different wavelengths. Research has shown that certain wavelengths of light in these ranges can be quite effective. So the body absorbs these light, this light that activates the mitochondria, that can activate an, uh, an enzyme called cytokine uh, oxidase that can decrease free radicals in our body. Therefore, that increases your body's natural energy, which is called ATP in our body. As ATP increases, we have more energy to um, make uh, compounds such as collagen, uh, improve our skin, and that decreases inflammation further. And, and then you get your uh, results, uh, as we had, had spoken about. Part of our, again, uh, visit or our meeting tonight is uh, if you do schedule a, a, a quick phone call with Bridget, um, uh, we'll put up an, an option for you to do that at the end of our webinar. And Bridget can arrange for you to have a, a complimentary trial of our uh, Theralate 360. So you can just set that up at the end of our webinar. 
couple of products that we use that can be very effective for decreasing uh, inflammation in our body that we're going to discuss next. Uh, one is a type of uh, fish oil derivative called uh, SPM, triple SPM. I'm just going to have John speak on that product. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, triple SPM, SPM stands for Specialized Pro-Resolving Mediator. What that means is that it, you, you were talking about inflammation and how inflammation can be good and it can be bad. It's it's good, it's the start, but if it keeps going on and on, it's it's not, not good. And what SPMs do is they actually resolve inflammation. Um, and and because of that, there there's a lot of research going into them right now. They're, it's an excellent product for helping with pain and any type of pain and inflammation. Um, I was doing some research recently for a uh, cardiologist um, looking at the different research there is on SPMs and just helping with cardio cardiology problems, um, heart disease and different things like that. Also working with a dentist and the same thing where SPMs help resolve the uh, periodontal issues and, and different things like that. So um, the one nice thing too is currently there are no known side effects or interactions with any other uh, supplements or drugs with SPMs. Um, so they, when you're dealing with inflammation, so many things uh, like um, steroids or methyltrexate or aspirin all have their problems uh, when you use long term. This is a very safe product to be able to use to help control inflammation. Um, it's something once. It, I was able to use it. I started using it. Um, I use it daily. So great product. So okay, uh, next thing we're just going to have uh, John speak a little bit about uh, curcumin. So uh, uh, you may know that as uh, turmeric. So turmeric is uh, made up of curcumin. The bioavailable or effective components of curcumin are called curcuminamoids that are another fantastic way to um, have an anti-inflammatory effect. So just going to have John speak on this one a little bit. So curcuma veil is a product that we designed, um, did the research on. The curcumin is a, has been known for years. It's, it's, you know, I mean, the effects of curcumin is, um, it, for example, it has a, its effect on inflammation, um, allergic reactions, autoimmunity, um, it has anti-cancer effects, cardiovascular protection, brain protection, a lot of different things that we know that curcumin's good for. The, the difficulty with curcumin is it absorbs, very little absorbs when you take it. What we were able to do was make curcumin fat soluble and be able to bring it in at a much higher rate than any other type of, you know, just taking straight curcumin, you're looking at, you know, a multifold increase of absorption. Um, so this is a this is a product that that works great for people. Um, I've used this. I've used this uh, before the SPMs came out. This was my go-to for any type of inflammation. Um, so it's a great product to consider if you've got any type of chronic inflammation, rheumatoid. Uh, I have a friend of mine that before our SPMs, I put him on this for his uh, torn meniscus, able to keep the pain controlled with with this and. Like I said, curcumin is a relatively safe product. Um, you know, it's it's in a lot of foods. So, th th and this just gives you a way of getting it enhanced to, for absorption. Yeah, just a great product for anybody suffering from uh, mild, moderate, or severe uh, osteoarthritis. Thanks, John. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, structure of our body, just to, to go over uh, some anatomy, uh, how our spine is shaped and, and why that's important to us. In our neck, uh, we have our cervical vertebra, seven bones. In our middle back, we have the thoracic vertebra, 12 bones. In the lumbar spine, 12 bones, down to our sacrum and, and tailbone. Uh, within our skull, on top of our spine, we have our our brain, uh, our brain extends in between the vertebra through our uh, via our uh, spinal cord, and then nerves go out to control uh, all the parts of our bodies, uh, to our face, hands, feet. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, there can be an interruption in the nerve flow uh, from the spine out to the rest of the body. Uh, we call that a vertebral subluxation. So that is an interference of muscles, discs, joints on those nerves, 
and a uh, inability of the muscles or the nerve to communicate uh, with the body, and thus you have a, a decrease uh, in function. Um, numbness or tingling in the hands. Uh, uh, some folks have uh, ear con congestion or difficulty seeing. Um, so these subluxations can have a dramatic effect on our ability to, to function properly. So uh, that leads us to nerve interference. Uh, a major obstacle that stands in the way of becoming healthier is an interference in the nervous system caused by these subluxations, not allowing us to move properly, not have proper balance, or to be ill uh, in other ways. As a chiropractor, uh, we're able to assist the body in removing these nerve interferences. And by following a nice guided plan, uh, we can allow this body to function better uh, at its optimal level, not just be out of pain, uh, but uh, better well-being overall. So uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming tonight. Um, one thing that you can do with Bridget is um, uh, in a moment, I'm going to have the uh, ability to, um, I think you're going to see like a little red box on the side that you, or green box that you can schedule a uh, call to our office. Uh, uh, we can go through any questions that you may have about the webinar. Um, if you try to address certain health concerns with a chiropractor or another doctor in the past, we can talk about how our approach, um, we can talk about is a chiropractor really the right avenue for you or do you need acupuncture, would you need to see one of our naturopathic uh, physicians, and we can help really put together a plan of action uh, to how to prepare for your first appointment, as well as Bridget, if you make that call with her, uh, she can schedule you for one of our complimentary Theralite visits uh, to get some benefits uh, of pain relief and reduce inflammation. Uh, so again, we wanna thank everybody for attending. Um, we'll let you know when we have our next webinar. Thanks again, John. Thank you for everybody for coming. Thank you, Mark. Good night.